Audio Jungle. Good morning and happy Sabbath. This is Richard Francis broadcasting live from the latest new nation, Shirikanavan, accompanied by Euroman Stanley Dodo. Today we are very glad to have a special guest in our studio for sharing the testimony. Before we start with the program, I would like to say that uh, the person who was actually to uh, share the testimony couldn't be here because of COVID. Uh, the Canadian government didn't allow them to travel. So on behalf of her, uh, her brother, uh, his brother, her brother, will be sharing the testimony. We would like to welcome your brother for today's interview. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Glad to have you here. God bless. We are really sorry uh, due to the bad network connection over there in Canada because a remote area we could not connect her. But we will ask our brother to text her the questions we will be asking you and she will be answering to us so that her testimony will be a blessing to us, brother. And so as we know, uh, already we have a special guest in the studio. Uh, her sister stays uh, in Canada. The place where she stays is known um, as Munawar. It's the newest, biggest, and most northerly territory of Canada. The city uh, that was created in 1999, 1999 is an immense populated territory with tundra, rugged mountains, and remote villages that are only accessible by boat or rail plane. It is also the home of small group of seven Adventists. So, today uh, we cannot meet her because of COVID, but her brother is here to help me. So, I would like to ask her brother, can you introduce your sister to us on this show? We will be glad to know about her. Thank you. My sister's name is Sakhele and uh, she is a mother of two children, boy and a girl. She works as a nurse in the capital city of Nunavut. Okay, uh, that was the introduction of uh, our guest who is not with us, but her brother is telling about her. So let me tell my viewers about a little bit about Nunava. This territory of Nunava faces really hard challenges with high level of homeless and domestic violence. So let us ask her brother what her village can do over there. When we arrived in Port England, an Adventist family from Jamaica lived there. After they left, we were the only Adventists and we lived in the heart of the community. My husband worked for the municipal government and I was the only nurse in town. If we had not been doing our jobs, things would not have happened in the community. As a result, you could say that we held positions of influence that made it difficult to witness. Some people were willing to accept anything that we said as fact. And we did not want to take advantage of their trust. We also did not want to speak as using our positions to improve our reach on others. So we were very careful, but there were certain things that we did. We started a soccer club for 9 to 12 year old girls. Port Inlet did not have any girls local club and our club have had a good influence on the community. Adults started noticing that young girls were no longer roaming the streets aimlessly. The girls had a purpose. They came to the soccer club for training, snacks and friendship. We also taught the girls to fundraise for the club. It wasn't just me, just me baking a cake to sell. It was mentoring, mentoring. We taught the girls to take ownership for the club so they could continue without us. Another way that we had an impact on the community was through my children's friends. Their friends asked to come over the over to our house to play on Friday evening and Saturday. We had our Sabbath worship at those times and we invited the children to join us. 
Praise God, praise God, praise God. Uh, how beautifully God is using Brother Sister in the foreign land. And we are really blessed how they have an influence on the local community. So I had actually had a talk with this brother. So I, I asked uh, him to ask this question to her sister. What is her dream for the church there in Canada? So brother, can you tell me what is the dream of the sister for the church in Canada? Thank you brother for asking me this question. Uh, my sister replied to me that We need our own church building, our witnessing initiatives are really limited by our in inability to have a place that we can call home. When I first visited Ipala several years ago, we had a dedicated place for Sabbath worship where we served food to the homeless during the week. Although we did not operate the soup kitchen on Sabbath, Homeless people knew that uh, they could come to the building on Sabbath for a fellowship on Sabbath for a fellowship meal. The smaller space that we now rent is not big enough for meals. My Sabbath school classmates in the living room of my house. The family classmates in someone else's living room and a third children's classmates in another home. The adults meet in our rented church building. It would be wonderful if we could worship and have other gatherings in our place. Praise God! That's so beautiful how God is working in people's life. And on this special day, I would like to place a little request to you all viewers. I want you to kneel down and pray to God as they need a church, a house of prayer. So it's a special request to pray for your number so that they can have a house of prayer. And I would like to thank uh, your brother uh, for having a conversation with your sister. We thought we would do online, we could see her, but due to network issues, we could not see. But she replied to you all the questions that you answered. Uh, we asked you. And thank you, uh, sister, for providing a glimpse of uh, remote Canada, how you are worshipping God and how God is using for His glory. Part of this 13th Sabbath offering will be going to open a new church and community center in Nunawa. So let us give generously for God because He is the one who gives us life. And at the end, again, I would like to thank you, brother, for coming on the show and thank you, sister, for sharing her testimony with us. God bless you all. Thank you. Happy Sabbath to all. Amen. Amen.